All right, welcome back, as always. So yeah, in the last episode, we took our first refactoring step by extracting a dedicated class that is responsible for validating the login form. And already, I think this has improved readability a good bit. So why don't we keep pulling on that thread a little bit and continue on to the next part of the page. And yeah, once again, I'm going to say out loud in an empty office what this code does, and then I, I will try to identify the nouns and the verbs. All right, so this code finds the user and then attempts to log the user in, uh, otherwise return to the login form and provide a, a little bit of feedback. Yes, yeah, so find the user and attempt to authenticate them. That's really what's going on here. Okay, authenticate. I had a verb, attempt. Hmm, maybe we can make this work. Let's go into my core directory, and why don't we add a class called, well, authenticate is a verb. So why don't we make it a noun by saying something like authenticate tour. All right. Uh, next, my verb was attempt. And what, what parameter should I pass to attempt, if any? I don't know yet. Let's come back and take this one step at a time. So if I were to comment, well, let's just, uh, yeah, let's comment all of it out for now. And we're going to have this new authenticator class. All right. I will call that off. And I know I'm going to call an attempt method, but what am I attempting to do? I'm attempting to authenticate. And to do that, I need credentials like an email address and a password. So yeah, maybe once again, we pass through the email and the password. All right. So let's accept it here. All right. And what does attempting uh, actually mean? Well, it means basically what we had here. So why don't we do this one step at a time? Switch over paste this in, and we start by tracking down the user. But yeah, right here, I don't have that DB class anymore. So I could do uh, dependency injection, but for now, why don't we just resolve it out of the container like this? Because at the moment, we're still sort of in the playing phase. As you'll find, a, a lot of programming is really playing around, toying around, seeing what works, seeing what doesn't. And sometimes that means you will write code for an hour and then undo all of it in favor of something else. And that's totally fine. It's just part of the uh, part of the flow. Okay, so we track down the user, and then what do we do? Well, right here, we say, well, if you could find a user, then uh, check if the password matches and call this login function. But now this feels a little weird. I have this authenticator class that's responsible for authentication, but it's deferring to a little helper function we created uh, an episode or two ago. That doesn't feel right. Why don't we grab login and log out and bring them into this new class like so. Okay, we'll make them both uh, public like so. Okay, so now up here, we will defer to our login method. And then uh, if everything's good, we redirect. Okay, again, just little baby steps, one little change at a time, and we will continue tweaking this uh, as the episode continues. All right, so finally, what about this code, though? Well, you could move it in there, but let's talk about this. Now, what I would say is our authenticator is doing too many things at this point. Now, I've introduced a new responsibility and a new piece of knowledge. The authenticator knows how to load a view. It knows where the login form is, and it knows uh, how to pass errors to the view, and it also knows what message should be passed. This is too many things. I feel like the controller should be responsible for returning the view, not the authenticator class. It's not the responsibility of the authenticator class to do something like that. So in that case, I don't want that. I'm going to keep it here. But now, of course, I need to figure out, well, under what condition would it make sense to return this view? And that condition is if we were unable to log the user in. So why don't we say if you could not successfully um, log in the user or authenticate on that condition, and let's reformat, on that condition alone, do we return this view? Okay, so that means attempt should return a Boolean. So let's see, right down here, return false. But yeah, then if I go right up here, 
if we could log the user in, the authenticator is redirecting and it's the exact same problem. It has too much knowledge. It knows what to do uh, in the event that authentication passed. And that's not quite right. The controller should be responsible for that, I think. So in that situation, we return true. Okay, so now my attempt method returns a Boolean that indicates whether or not we could successfully log the user in. So if I come up, well, why don't we do this? Let's say if we could attempt to log the user in, do something, otherwise do something else. Okay, and the if is a simple redirect, and that's what we end up with here. Okay, but I still see a lot more we can do. First up, you'll notice throughout the last 10 episodes or so, every time I want to redirect, I, I have to write these two, frankly, annoying lines of code. Header, location, and then I write the path, and then I exit uh, for security purposes. What does that mean, though? Let, let's just do it again. Empty office. What does this code do? It redirects to the home page. Okay, the verb is redirect. I need something called redirect to help with readability. So let's just say redirect to the home page and then make that code work. All right, let's just add a simple helper function in our little uh, global functions file, redirect to a path uh, like so. And then I can paste in what we had before. And then let's do this. Let's uh, replace the quotes and then I can substitute the provided path. And yeah, that will do the exact same thing. Cool. So now a small little baby step to make the process of redirecting just a little bit clearer. Very cool. So the next thing is, and this is sort of a style choice. A lot of programming comes down to style as we've discussed. If else, that is correct. However, if we redirect, we know that we kill the script, we exit, which means the else uh, portion is a little superfluous because we would never get to this section uh, in the first place. Some people will keep it though, because again, they think it makes it crystal clear if this, otherwise do that. Or if you want, you could remove it like so. And to be honest with you, sometimes I will do one, sometimes I will do the other. It just sort of comes down to like what, what feels right. And for whatever reason, uh, sometimes it feels right to do it this way. And another time it feels right to do it that way. It's sort of like if you ever have to go somewhere in town, you might take one route in your car to get there. And for whatever reason, you go a different route coming home. Uh, there's sometimes no real rhyme or reason to it. It's just what felt right at the time. And the same is true for programming, as it turns out. All right, let's read some code. 75% uh, of, of programming is reading. So let's keep reading it over and over until it makes good sense. But actually, real quick, before we do that, uh, you'll notice that this DB variable is not being used anywhere. And that's because, of course, we extracted that logic to the authenticator. So now I can get rid of that. And then we also have two more imports that are no longer necessary. And I like what I'm seeing here. Okay, let's read the file. So we create a login form and we try to validate the email and the password. And if that failed, then we have to return to the login form and display the errors. Otherwise, if validation passed, then we will attempt to authenticate the user based upon the provided credentials. And if we were successful, they're now signed in and we can redirect them wherever they need to go. Otherwise, once again, we go back to the login form, but this time I hard code the errors. Okay, so I see my next refactor that I'd like to make. Notice that this and this are very similar, but they're still slightly different. So have a look, this one returns to the login page and passes the errors from the login form. This one also returns to the login page, but this time we hard code an email validation message based upon uh, that failed authentication attempt. Okay, so yeah, this can sometimes be a little tricky. So I will, I will teach you a pretty cool refactoring strategy that I use all of the time. So uh, whenever you're in a situation where you have two pieces of code that are mostly the same, but slightly different, Instead, see if you can make whatever change is necessary to make those two pieces of code identical. I'll show you an example. So if I want these two pieces to be identical, this code up here needs to be the same code at the bottom. Okay, well, how do I make that work though? Well, it sounds like this message here that we were hard coding would instead need to come from this errors method uh, on the form validation class. 
So it sounds like I need a way to append a new validation error to the login form. Okay, well maybe, and let's just write it out. What would I wanna do? Maybe something like add error, or if I can, maybe I'll just do error. We give the corresponding field and then the message that goes along with it. Yeah, and if we could make that work, that would solve the problem, wouldn't it? Then this uh, snippet here and this snippet would be identical. And once they're identical, the whole reason for this is once they're identical, we can merge them. Okay, but one step at a time. Let's go into login form and add a new method called error. This will accept the field and the corresponding message. Okay, so let's just update the errors list. We pass through the field and the message. Okay, and I think that's it. So if I come back, that solves our problem. All right, step two, merge them into one. So how do we do that? Well, I can get rid of all of this code here. And yeah, maybe at the top, we can, we can swap out this form validation. Why don't we say, if the form validated successfully, in that case, we don't return to the login page, but instead continue on to the next uh, step of the process, which is attempting to log the user in. Okay, but if we could not uh, successfully log them in, that is the point where we add a new, or we manually append to the form errors list. So think about it, if we make that small adjustment, we've now refactored our way out of the duplication, which is really cool. Okay, so let's see, let's read it again. Create a login form, try to validate the credentials. If we were successful, attempt to authenticate the user. If we were successful, redirect. Otherwise, update our errors list and then return to the login page. Perfect. Okay, what else can we do here? Are there any other small, tiny refactors we can make? One thing I see is I only reference this auth variable once. Uh, so again, this is a style choice, but if you like, you can automatically inline it or manually inline it if you want. Uh, again, it's just a style choice. It's not necessarily better. It's, it's, it's a style thing. And in fact, if you're not passing constructor args, if you like, you can omit the opening and closing parentheses and we get something like that. Yeah, not necessarily better in that case, just maybe uh, closer, closer to adopting my, my own style, uh, style guide and yours might be a little different. Okay, what else? Anything else? Well, once again, we have the explicit else statement that's a little redundant because redirecting will already kill the script. So in that case, I could optionally remove it. And then this is what we get. And then once again, do I use the form in more than one place? Yes, I do, so I can't inline that. I need to keep it. All right, let's read it a fifth time. We load this page, we instantiate a login form, we validate the form, and then we attempt to authenticate the user. And then uh, if that was unsuccessful, we return to the login page. I think this is looking pretty good actually. And in fact, I think it's looking good enough that we can move on to the next episode.